Okay, here we have a, a 1986 Honda XL250R. Um, a lot of people are wondering about switching their old Enduros and motorcycles over to LEDs. And I did it with this one um, primarily because it was impossible to find a replacement headlight. This headlight here um, was $90 for a used one on eBay and there was no guarantee that it would work. So what I did was went on eBay and found a set of two similarly sized uh, headlights and uh, they have glass fronts glass fronts important to have so that way you don't so you don't melt if you have any uh, high temperature lights so I got that and the primarily reason I switched over to LEDs is so I could power this new light bulb the original headlight was 35 watts and this is a 55 watt high power Sylvania I think silver I, I don't know they're expensive for one headlight their car headlight bulbs it was about twenty dollars a bulb, but I really wanted the lumens, and uh, it runs at fi or sixty and fifty-five watts. So in order to run that with the original stator, I had to eliminate a lot of wattage places. You notice I have the short stock. Um, turn it on here. I have the short stock LED front and rear turn signals that are pretty bright right there um, the headlight actually that's on right now is not the actual headlight all it is is if you can see down in here see if it's too bright it's one um, T10 uh, SM or 5 SM LEDs uh, just a little plug-in that's actually just a marker light um, this headlight came with a halo unit so I figured I'd put a white um, nice bright white marker. This helps for when I'm parking my bike when it turns off because this headlight is only on when the bike is actually running. So we have that LED is just basically a running light, a marker light, and if you see with the light off here in the kitchen, it's still uh, significantly bright for a um, just a little marker light. Um, if there was a, uh, an emergency and your headlight broke, this could oh man, rusty kitchen. This could, uh, you could uh, slowly um, ride home with just this one little marker light working. And as you can see, it's putting off a ton of light using very little power. So right now the bike is not on and the headlight is not on. But that's that one light you can tell is putting off a decent amount of light. Uh, could, could get you home if you needed to in an emergency. So like I said, convert it over to um, short stock LED uh, turn signals which are actually very bright it's also safer these are very bright turn signals and you can see here I replaced the running light with an LED um, running light so right there I eliminated uh, a lot of wattage that's used um, by the bike that can go back to the headlight now so I'm not drawing too much from the stator. So we got the um, running light and we got a turn signal on back here. Very bright, very nice. But that's not all. Um, we also, or I also changed the <coughs> um, dash lights in here. There's two LEDs. I used uh, less power ones than the, it's the same style bulb as the one that's in the front here. But I didn't need that much brightness for my just my dash marker lights here. So I did that. I also replaced the, you can see the neutral light. That's also been replaced with a LED. That runs, these bulbs are 5 watts a piece. So you have 5 watts and 5 watts in the dash. That's 10 watts you eliminated. And that's a constant draw from your battery. And then your neutral light on is 5 watts. Your turn, so you can't see really my turn signal indicator light right now. Um... When the bike's running, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit brighter, but it does function. And then, obviously, the high beam switch you can't. But all LEDs in here, you do have to be careful when you switch over to LED turn signals that you get a non-polarity sensitive um, indicator light for your turn signals. Otherwise, you'll have some funky things going on with your turn signals that I figured out when I first installed mine. Then I got a non non-polarized LED indicator, and it worked great. Um, the other thing <clears throat> that you have to do if you're converting 
your bike is you have to get an LED uh, flasher for your turn signals because you do not have enough load. Your LEDs do not draw enough load for your turn signal thing to click, you know, so it'll just stay on. Uh, I picked that up at Super Bright LEDs for about uh, $10. I don't know, this is like two years ago now, and uh, you can probably get them cheaper. Um, I saw them on eBay, um, adjustable LED flasher, so you can adjust your flash time. You know, you can adjust the, the quickness of how flash your flashers go. Um, the other thing that I added to this bike for safety and brightness um, is pretty cool. I just put this in. I also ordered this from Super Bright LEDs. This is a brake light flasher. Check this out. Okay, so this is from, you know, the front of the bike view. This is, it flashes four times really fast, four times slowly, and then stays on every time you hit the brakes. So as you can see, that catches your attention if someone's behind you. Let's see if I can get a view from behind of that happening. All right. And you can see that that brake light is much brighter than the stock brake light. And the running light is much brighter. And there's a significant difference um, between the brake and running light. That is something you have to be careful with when ordering LEDs. I believe this is an 1157 replacement in the back here. I paid about $7 for this bulb because I wanted a nice bright one that showed the difference in uh, between the brake light and running light because I had one where the running light was bright and the brake light was also bright so there was not a big difference. Not a fan of that. I want there to be a noticeable change when the brake light comes on. So yeah, that is... That flasher is definitely um, something that is noticeable. And every time you put on the brakes, that thing flashes four times. Yeah, $5 for that flashing module with super bright LEDs. So altogether, um, price-wise, we got about 7 or $8 in this taillight bulb. All four of the turn signal stock LEDs are about $20. The flashing unit for the LED turn stock is $10, and then about $5 uh, miscellaneous for the dash light LEDs and the uh, running light LED, and with some extra ones. So it's really uh, um, not too bad, uh, like I said. And also, you know, like I said, $5 for the um, brake light module. It's really not too expensive to convert over to LEDs, just be very careful with your polarities. LEDs do not work um, with reverse polarities like other lights do, so you have to make sure you have them connected positive, positive, negative, negative. You get in some funky stuff. Uh, with your turn signals, if you don't have those done correctly or if you don't have all your bulbs in, um, I have not done this on a bike with running lights. Some people, some bikes have uh, running lights in the, in the stocks. Uh, mine are just turn signals, so um that's pretty much it if you want to convert your bike over to leds in the future i may put an actual led um headlight headlight bulb in there as well right now it's a halogen xenon bulb what, what you're seeing is just the marker light bulb it's hard to tell it's just down at the bottom it's what's called a halo halo bulb um it's right yeah Let's see if you can see it right down there uh right there is it just, it's a little halo bulb, it's got five LEDs, and that's what's doing all the reflection right down, the main headlight right there, that's not even on, you can see that's not on. So, very bright, very safe, and not too expensive if you're considering your safety, and uh, like I said, the whole package costs less than what I would have had to pay for just the normal uh, replacement headlight for Honda, because they don't make it anymore. Um, the headlight was a little tricky. I had to do a little bit of, uh, fabrication to make the frame fit. And also I had to borrow the old rubber seal from the old light to go around it. But, um, you know, that's, uh, maybe I'll explain that in another video. Thank you. Bye.